Good morning and welcome back to Big Mouth. Why do I say good morning? It's not going to be morning by the time you see this video. Anyway, welcome to my preview of Doctor Who Season 11, Episode 6. So why have I titled this video, Big Finish is the Future of Doctor Who? Well, that's simple for me. I was thinking about this a lot yesterday. And when you look at Big Finish and you look at the fans' responses to those Big Finish Doctor Who stories, there is no toxicity. There is no negative reactions. Everyone's feeling the love. And that's because Doctor Who Big Finish is... Doctor Who for the fans, by the fans. And the people running that are so clever. Personally, if I was, if I owned the Doctor Who franchise, I would be adapting big finished stories for Doctor Who movies. Meanwhile, when I was making the TV show, I would take it back to basics and I'd try and intermingle something where we could implement classic Who and new Who. So we can just bring those fans together bring back the numbers and the enjoyment and the excitement because the excitement, the buzz for Doctor Who just simply isn't there if you're a Doctor Who fan. Never mind if you're a classic Who fan or a new Who fan. The people I see on Twitter getting excited are people who have never watched a Doctor Who pre-season 11. They claim to have. I think there's a lot of fake accounts bigging up Jodie Whittaker's Doctor and Chris Chibnall's Season 11 because even the marketing was very sus suspect when you saw Jodie Whittaker surprising kids and things like that. Oh, these are fans of Jodie Whittaker's Doctor, are they? Well, she, hasn't, she hadn't even done an episode yet. So it all seemed like a bit of a put-up job. But that marketing was very clever and, and the person responsible for the marketing should certainly get a raise and that's why the numbers so far haven't fallen below 5 million, which is very, very important. They stayed 6 point something. They've gone no lower than that. I think this week could be the week that they go at least 5 million something. I, I really do, because I think Chris Chibnall has been taking the absolute mickey out of Michael um, with the past two episodes. They've been so bland, so vanilla, not good. Not bad, they've just been there. And that's the problem. You can have fillers when you're doing 13, 15, 20, 25 episodes. You can't have fillers when you're doing 10 episodes. You watch Game of Thrones. You won't get a filler in eight episodes. You won't get a filler in 10 episodes. I know that's a, that's quite a big kind of example because Game of Thrones is Game of Thrones. And obviously the budget they have is bigger than Doctor Who. But it's not about budget. It's about imagination, how you write. Now, I remember when Russell T. Davies was talking about Boomtown, he called it a cheap episode, and he said, cheap, not necessarily in poor, but, you know, a cheaper episode, but that Boomtown episode was absolutely fantastic. So, I think, I think that Big Finish is certain, I think when, the, when Chibnall's totally ruined Doctor Who, and listen, the numbers are going to keep on falling, there's no question about that, um, I think once they've killed it so much, I think the future is big finish. I think that, um, uh, what's the guy's name who pretty much runs it, who does the voice of the Daleks, was it Nick something? He's brilliant, and he really is. I'm glad that I can't remember his name, because he's so... How that guy's never run Doctor Who live action, the TV series, I don't know. I don't know why he's not involved in this. Why don't they trust him? People say, yeah, well, big finish is audio, and it's different. What's different? The, the, the head writer, the showrunner, is in charge of the story. And then you've got, a, you know, a senior figure from the BBC who's actually executive producer. So the showrunner doesn't run everything. It's, it's mainly the creative element of it. So he could definitely do that. And I definitely think that Big Finish should be running uh, live action uh, the Doctor Who as well. I, I, I genuinely uh, do believe that. Now, the big question's been this week, and I will get round to talking about this episode soon. But the big question this week from the media is, is Doctor Who season 11 too politically correct, too PC? Let me tell you, let me give you my take, because I hate this term, politically correct. But let me tell you what I think. Doctor Who has been very diverse from the moment it returned in 2005. For crying out loud, we saw Captain Jack land one on the Doctor's lips. 
in the parting of the ways. Now, I was brought up with a, by a very um, homophobic father. And when I saw that, I actually cried. I loved that bit. So let's not talk about Doctor Who being too politically correct. I think the media are using this narrative to divert from the fact that Doctor Who season 11 is actually vanilla, crap, bland, boring, right? And when I say crap, it's not crap. It's just not interesting. There's no connective tissues. There's no arc. It's just not interesting for me personally. And I'm talking about me. So let me tell you some of the words that I've I've heard about season 11 through, through early reviews. Um, I've, I've heard the word humdrum. Um, emotional, but humdrum. Now, how can it be emotional if it's hum, humdrum pretty much means boring, which means it's pretty much like all the episodes. Even like Rosa, which was a really well written episode and I enjoyed Rosa, but I still didn't feel the need to rewatch it. That excitement that I had after I watched Rose, the first episode of the revival. I was excited. I was pacing up and down the room. And next on BBC One, go to BBC Three and you can see Doctor Who Confidential. What's that? I go there. I see Russell T Davies for the first time being so enthusiastic and talking about the process of his of his thought process and how the show's made. That was brilliant. We don't have that excitement anymore. I don't pace up and down the room after I've watched Doctor Who anymore. So this episode, and I forgot what it's called, uh, the titles are so kind of, I, I just can't, I never remember them, but basically they're going to meet Yaz's grandmother when she's really young, and I think it's, is it in India? Um, it's called something something Punjab, is, isn't it? So basically the doctor's constantly warning her uh, to be careful that she doesn't change history. Um so I think this is, I suppose this is kind of similar to Father's Day, which I really, I think Father's Day is a classic Doctor Who episode. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And it looks like they're doing the same thing. I don't know why the Doctor does this, because basically, why would you take a human being back to meet their grandmother? Because you know they're going to they're gonna F it up, aren't they? They're human beings. We just can't help ourselves. But it looks like it could be an OK episode. And I'm looking forward to it. And I'll credit Chris Chibnall with this, that at least he's doing kind of world history rather than just boring imperial British history, which is just about the First and Second World War. That doesn't interest me and most young people. Let's be honest about it, no matter what they say on Twitter, no matter what um, the media say. So it's, it's a little bit more interesting. But yeah, I expect to watch this episode and think it's OK but probably won't go back and watch it again. So, it, look, it all depends on the ratings. I've heard costume people who are working on Doctor Who saying they're already been asked to start work on season 12. Now, going talking about the rumours about the big break of 18 months, um, when do we think they'll start filming then if they're going to start on costumes? Because that wouldn't mean uh, season 12's already been written. Um I would think if they're going to start filming, it's going to be the new year now, isn't it? Who knows when? I would say early new year. So I would say that maybe we the rumours could be fake and we could get more Doctor Who the same time we did this year. But we shall see. We may get the break. We may not get the break. But yeah, um, basically, um, I feel that this episode, reading the early reviews for it, it's just going to be more of the same. It's going to be okay. I hope it's a classic. I hope there's some, you know, connective tissues, which there hasn't been so far. So, you know, to me, this is this is the thing for me, that it's just been too bland, too vanilla, and um, not very interesting. I will be doing a review on this episode um, sometime tomorrow. What I do is I don't like to do a review um, straight after the episode. First of all, it's evening. The lighting isn't great here and where I'm sitting and where I do the videos. And I, and I just like to get my thoughts together and do it on a Monday. So sometime on Monday, I'll be posting my episode six review. I hope I love it. I hope I don't hate it. I hope it's not more of the same. At least Chibnall isn't writing it. That's got to be a good thing. We shall see. Have a lovely day.